Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless stargazers may want to keep their eyes on the sky because a giant asteroid is expected to go right by earth tonight this thing is over 2.5 million miles away from earth and that sounds pretty far but in terms of space it's actually real close close enough for nasa to call it a quote potentially hazardous object now, this thing is apparently the size of the Brooklyn Bridge, whose central span is over a thousand feet long. So that would be pretty scary if it really was on a collision course with Earth. But no worries, there's no risk of it actually colliding with us. Joining us now is astrophysicist Dr. Paul Sutter. Space is, of course, a busy place, and asteroids pass by Earth all the time. If this thing is not going to collide with Earth, why label it a potentially hazardous object? Why, why all this attention? Oh, uh, this is a great question because, yes, like you said, space is very busy. There are rocks flying by all the time. And we want to be very careful. We want to monitor every single potential threat. One, because the more we monitor, the better we get at monitoring and finding more actually dangerous rocks in advance. And two, rocks can change their orbits. Things can mm. change, and a potentially hazardous object can become an actually hazardous object very quickly. Now, I, of course, am no expert in this, but I know that for a long time, right, experts have argued that we need an improved planetary defense system. That's the case you seem to be making here, too. You know, one that scans the skies for these smaller objects that, you know, it might not destroy Earth, but would certainly do significant damage to something like a city. Is this that kind of asteroid that they've been talking about? Yes, to give you some perspective, this asteroid is around uh, 10 to 50 meters across. Uh, and if that were to strike the Earth, if it were to strike the Earth, it would be going at tens of thousands of miles per hour. And with that much kinetic energy, it would release the equivalent amount of energy as the nuclear bombs dropped over Japan in World mm. War II. I mean, this is, yeah, this is, this is, you must ruin every party you go to. I mean, you know, for, for me, for me, I immediately then think, okay, well, what could happen if the next one comes along and we're not ready? I mean, last year, we know that NASA successfully changed an asteroid's orbit in their DART mission. If this asteroid had been on a real collision course with Earth, do you think we have the technology we need to defend our planet? Uh, the answer to that question is maybe and it depends if we can spot the asteroid early enough we can potentially send an intercept mission like the dart mission and knock it off course in a small change in its initial orbit will end up adding up over time and completely missing the earth but if we wait too long and we don't catch it soon enough there's nothing we can do and we just have to hold on for dear life the seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world and the news headlines prove it God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day's signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes a massive asteroid impact as we read in Revelation 8. 10 and 11. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water, because it was made bitter. The Bible tells us a large asteroid will strike the earth in the near future, and no early warning detection or system to deviate the trajectory of this asteroid will do any good. Putting your trust in these systems will not save you from the wrath of God. Only putting your trust in Jesus Christ can save you, and he is the only way. Acts 4.12 Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. A cleanup effort is underway after tens of thousands of dead fish washed up on the Texas Gulf Coast this weekend. Officials say the fish suffocated because of low oxygen levels in the water. 
After thousands of dead fish washed ashore, state park and wildlife officials in Brazoria County are now warning people to stay away from the beach. Experts say that low dissolved oxygen, which can lead to algae growth, seems to be causing the deaths. Photos from Quintana Beach County Park show just how many fish have been swept ashore out there. The crews started removing the fish from the shore, but they say the issue continues. Hosea 4, 1 through 3. Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There is no faithfulness or steadfast love and no knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break all bounds, and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it languish. And also the beasts of the field, and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. God is judging the world in these last days the same way he judged Israel in Hosea 4.3. The prophet Hosea tells us the reasons God judged Israel. No faithfulness or steadfast love, no knowledge of God in the land, swearing, bearing false witness, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery. Sounds a lot like America, doesn't it? Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance, that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. For punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. A string of tornadoes carving a path of destruction through the south. The warnings ringing out as deadly storms touch down in Alabama and Georgia, tearing apart buildings, downing trees and power lines, and leaving roads impassable. Overnight, more than 30 million Americans also in the path of a line of intensive, fast-moving windstorms. At times, gusts breaking 80 miles an hour. The trailer started wobbling real bad, so we all just had to hunker down and try to just ride it out. The fierce storms bringing lightning and damaging softball-sized hail in some areas. Blinding rain and flooding also backing up roads as more than 200,000 Americans dealt with power outages overnight. In the days ahead, soaring dangerous heat will also be a big problem with millions under heat alerts today, sweating it out from Texas to Florida. In Texas, the heat reigniting worries about an aging power grid that fatally failed in a 2021 snowstorm but has not experienced massive disruptions from a heat event with cities like Miami also looking at a heat index around 105. The summer already off to a sweltering and stormy start. At least a dozen tornadoes ripped through four states yesterday. In the next 24 hours, nearly 20 million people will face the threat of severe weather. Booms of thunder uh, jolted many of us out of bed uh, earlier this morning. Loud reminders that this unusual and potentially dangerous storm system is going to stick around. And across the region, tens of thousands of people are still without power. Going right downtown. A string of at least a dozen tornadoes ripped across the southeast 
Wednesday, unusually strong for this time of year. Including here in Eufaula, Alabama, where strong winds sheared the walls off homes, cut through trees, and downed power lines. I was very scared. My heart was beating real fast. Um, I ran in the room to get my little girl. Brittany Shade told us she saw the tornado approaching out her window and raced to wake up her sleeping daughter. They hid in the bathroom until it passed. It was like a like a train was coming. It was a loud noise. It was like boom, 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 boom. I thought it was going to take me. Satellite footage shows storm clouds and clusters of lightning moving across the region. From the ground, time-lapse video from Pell City, Alabama, shows more storm clouds blowing in, limiting visibility. Other parts of the state were pelted with hail, as were communities in Arkansas, where some people saw baseball-sized hail. The deadly severe weather outbreak across the south overnight. The hardest hit was the town of Perrington in Texas, where a tornado ravaged the area, killing at least three people. That tornado actually hit just after 5 o'clock. A lot of people were headed home for the day. That's dinner time for most of us across the country. A lot of families telling me they didn't even realize that this was going to end up in their backyards. And yet, here we are with debris scattered everywhere. Take a look right behind me. You can actually see a car has ended up literally in someone's front area, the front of their home. Over to my right, you can see what looks like a child's trampoline now stuck in this tree. As the sun starts to rise here in this small town, we do know that three have been confirmed dead. One is still missing, and we're going to see a lot of first responders coming in right now to help with the search and rescue. Big tornado, holy smokes. Overnight, millions on high alert as extreme storms batter the south. In Perryton, Texas, at least three people dead and dozens more injured after a large tornado tore through. Another one to the left of it. Leaving the town without power and the local hospital running on generators. This whole area is just why. We've got one trailer on fire. We've got uh, multiple trailers destroyed. Mountains of debris down power lines and flattened buildings. In Escambia County, Florida, one person died after a tornado ripped through the area. Also, a tornado was spotted in Ohio. Severe winds tearing this roof off a building in Toledo. In Hot Springs, Arkansas, residents pounded by massive hail, strong enough to crack windshields and take out taillights. Ooh, the real skylight. Breaking through the roof of one family's home. Do you hear that? Heavy hail up north in Howell, Michigan, leaving the ground blanketed and summer far from sight. Back here in Perryton, we have confirmed more than 200 structures have been completely destroyed. We do know the entire town is without power, and now the power company is saying it could take days, if not weeks, to get everything back up and running. In just minutes, a powerful tornado shredded homes in Perryton, Texas, leaving a mangled mess of mattresses and furniture behind. This mobile home park now unrecognizable, as what's left of one home burns. Neighbors climb through rubble. This whole area is just wide now. Driving through the city, you can see the widespread damage. This video captured the twister picking up speed as it tossed debris into the air. And this is City Hall right here. So um, <laughs> we're, we're seeing lots and, and lots of damage. Emergency officials say at least three people were killed and more than 50 were injured. Two people are still missing. Hey, get back in, Tanner. Crews with our CBS affiliate KFDA okay. immediately yeah, took cover you. as the twister touched down. This tornado is one of 10 reported across the south, all part of a dangerous system that whipped up record rainfall, lightning, and powerful wind. Wind so strong that one person died after a tree fell on their home in Pensacola, Florida. The city shattered its more than 30-year-old rainfall record with more than 9.3 inches of rain falling in just hours. In Lawton, Oklahoma, families are surveying the damage after a tornado and a heavy mix of wind and hail slammed the area. I opened the door and the debris fell in. Jason Tarrant moved into his new apartment Thursday morning, just hours before the tornado hit. Now he says he's living in a pile of debris. I've been here less than 24 hours. I ran inside, 
got my dog, went to the bathtub, and we waited it out. In the south and the Midwest, tornadoes, deadly and destructive ones. Take a look at this drone footage. It's from Perryton, Texas, taken after a wow. tornado flattened an entire neighborhood there. You can see the smoke rising. It's a fire burning in the remains of what was someone's home. And here's another up-close look at a twister that barreled through that community. Look at these pictures. Wow. Investigators trying to figure out exactly how many tornadoes touched down. One of them was northeast of Lethbridge, another in the Enchant area. CTV's Austin Lee is standing by in Calgary with more. Austin, first the fires, now the tornadoes. Tell us more about what happened yesterday afternoon in Alberta with uh, these storms. Yeah, Marcia, it's been a wild start to uh, summer when it comes to the weather across Alberta, really. And, and again, you can add tornadoes to the list now. You mentioned Environment Canada. They're trying to figure out exactly how many touched down. They do confirm that it was multiple tornadoes. To a new air quality alert for parts of the Midwest as smoke from the Canadian wildfires brings unhealthy air and hazy skies into the U.S. And Alex Perez is in Chicago. Millions of people in cities across the Great Lakes are waking up to find this Sky filled with that Canadian wildfire smoke. Now, it's been especially bad in the Minneapolis area. At its peak, the air quality there yesterday was the worst on record since 1980, registering 243 on the air quality index. That falls under the very unhealthy level. Now, this morning, five states are currently under alerts for unhealthy air quality. quality. This all comes one week after this incredible haze that blanketed New York City, West to Detroit and down to Washington, D.C. and beyond some of those spots hitting four hundreds on the air quality index. Now, we have not seen numbers that high or that bad this time around, but with those Canadian wildfires still raging, many are bracing for more smoke down the line. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from Him, and He is still offering forgiveness of sins through His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today, as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. We begin this morning here on the Korean Peninsula. North Korea fired two short-range ballistic missiles on Thursday evening, coming just over two weeks after their first ever spy satellite launch attempt. North Korea has yet again escalated tensions on the Korean Peninsula. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff confirmed that Pyongyang fired two short-range ballistic missiles toward the EC on Thursday evening. The missiles were fired between 7.25 p.m. and 7.37 p.m., and traveled a distance of some 780 kilometers before landing in the water. The launch is Pyongyang's first notable provocation in around two weeks, as it attempted to launch a spy satellite in late May. It's also the first ballistic missile test in more than two months. The launch came shortly after Pyongyang displayed outrage and warned of an inevitable response to Seoul and Washington's annihilation live fire exercise, which ended on Thursday. The largest ever drill between the two allies is the first of its kind in six years and marked the 70th anniversary of the Seoul-Washington alliance. President Yoon himself was present on the last day of the drill to oversee operations. North Korea's defense ministry labeled the exercise provocative and irresponsible and promised a comprehensive response to any form of provocation by its enemies. Tonight, as Ukraine's counteroffensive in the east grinds forward... Russia raising the nuclear stakes and moving tactical nuclear warheads to its neighbor and ally, Belarus. That's according to the country's president, Alexander Lukashenko, who says the weapons are three times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. No official confirmation from the Kremlin, which previously said the weapons would be moved later this summer. In what would be the first time Russia has deployed nuclear weapons beyond its borders since the collapse of the Soviet Union. 
and in Odessa, families jolted from sleep this morning by Russian missile strikes. At least three civilians killed, Ukraine says, and three more in shelling in the eastern region of Donetsk. Hanging over the counteroffensive, a major question. How effectively is Ukraine using the Western weapons supplied by the U.S. and NATO allies? To get answers, NBC News analyzed video from both the Russian and Ukrainian militaries, showing different angles of a single battle. It's early Thursday, June 8, in the southeastern region of Zaporizhia, and a fierce firefight is underway. Analysts say this appears to be the first time Ukraine has deployed American-made Bradley fighting vehicles in combat. This one appears to hit a landmine, damaging the treads and immobilizing the vehicle. But the Bradley's design shields the crew from the worst of the blast. They deploy smoke canisters to hide their movements. And when the smoke is thick enough, they make a break for it. Here's that disabled vehicle in Russian drone footage. We match the layout of these wrecks in both of the videos. The battle ends with several Bradleys lost, along with German-made Leopard tanks. Russian losses, unclear. Russian troops later celebrating that disabled Bradley as a trophy of war. But the U.S. this week announcing it's sending 15 new vehicles as part of its latest $300 million aid package, resupplying a critical counteroffensive that's still in early days. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says he is appalled by reports of violence in Sudan's Darfur region. Leaders of the East African regional bloc, IGAD, are hoping to resolve the conflict. At a meeting in Djibouti, Kenya's president said he will push for a face-to-face -face meeting between Sudan's warring generals. Thousands have been fleeing west from Darfur to neighboring Chad. As Zain Basravi reports from Adre in Chad, long-running ethnic divisions have only deepened. For some Sudanese refugees in camps in Chad, fear is turning to anger. Eager to talk about the injustices they are facing, many are unable to speak without crying. Usman was separated from his family when fighting broke out in Al Janaina in West Darfur. He searched for weeks before crossing the border. People whom are in Janaina now, they are suffering from every side. They are not, there is no food, there is no medicine, there is no place to go, there is no place to go to, to, go to get water. Uh, I want to send my message to help those people. He lost a hand in a previous conflict and says if he doesn't find his family, he will do the unthinkable and go back to streets lined with the dead to risk meeting the same fate. This territory, the gunman says, is now under militia control. Those who've worked in Darfur for decades blame political neglect, a collapse of state authority and previous governments who armed certain communities for their own political gain. The war in Khartoum is a classic battle between two rival forces in a struggle for power. In Darfur, and especially in El Janina, it is much more existential between communities. It goes to the struggle for land, uh, for water, uh, for use of natural resources, precious metals and min minerals. Refugees say El Janina is the worst place in the world. On street level, it is obvious that more and more people are arriving from Sudan on a daily basis. The refugees we speak to say, while it is true that the militias are targeting one specific tribe at the moment, the violence is so widespread, it is affecting everybody. UN calls for a ceasefire have been drowned out by the sounds of war. Aid groups worry the ongoing violence could spread across the region. The Masalit warn, if the militias are not stopped, other tribes could be targeted next. This hospital in the Imphal East district of Manipur is filling up with the wounded. 
They're the latest casualties of ethnic violence between the Kuki tribal group and ethnic majority Meite people. Hijam Nuacha survived Tuesday's violence. His wife is relieved he's getting intensive care. Bullets-ridden bodies have been taken to a nearby morgue. Police say they're the victims of a major gun battle in a Kuki tribal village. Most were from the Meite community. Tensions between the Kuki and Meite in Manipur have been growing for years. The flashpoint is mainly over the distribution of land, jobs and education. It was sparked by a protest against the state high court's recommendation to give tribal status to the Meites, who make up half of the state's population. Since then, homes and shops have been burned down. Dozens of people have been killed and tens of thousands forced from their homes. At least 40,000 people have moved to relief camps such as this one for their safety. Back at the hospital, medical teams are doing what they can to treat the injured as the number of dead continues to rise. Luke, 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Turning now to Syria, where unidentified aircraft launched two waves of precision-guided attacks on at least two military installations located near the country's capital. According to the Syrian regime-controlled Sana News Agency, missiles appeared over the skies of Damascus at five minutes before 2 a.m. overnight. And while the aerial defense array was triggered in the Arab Republic, the incoming projectiles managed to evade most of the interceptors and struck their intended targets, causing extensive damage. Moreover, while the Syrian military confirmed that one of its soldiers sustained serious injuries, circulating reports alleged that at least two were killed and another five were injured, including one senior member of the Quds Force belonging to Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps. The country predictably blamed Israel, although the IDF spokesperson's unit neither confirmed nor denied involvement in the attacks in response to TV7's request for comment. One day soon, we will get out of bed, turn on the morning news, and the broadcast will go something like this. Israel has launched an all-out attack on Damascus, Syria. It has ceased from being a city and is a ruinous heap. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17, 9, In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow, and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Is global chaos the new normal? As anyone can plainly see, the world is in a state of decay, moral, economic, political, every way possible. People are saying the world is out of control and looking for someone, anyone, to rescue the planet. Soon, very soon, a leader will appear on the horizon that appears to have all the answers, to calm the oceans, to bring peace to all the nations. His title will be the Antichrist, and he will be welcomed by millions of those on earth not taken with the rapture. Unfortunately, his true identity will be known soon to those left behind that his true intentions are death, destruction, and control. So yes, global chaos is the new normal until the Lord Jesus Christ comes at the end of the Antichrist's seven-year reign of terror and establishes true peace on earth. It seems like a good time for Satan to present the lawless one to the world. 2 Thessalonians 2, 7-12 For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, 
because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.